My name is Neil Petwari and this is ECE 5510 Random Processes and the topic of this video segment is Poisson process. So what is a Poisson process? A Poisson process counts the number of arrivals in a particular amount of time. Okay. And those arrivals, that's kind of a fuzzy word. We're kind of using it generically to describe lots of different possible systems. So for example, telephone calls. Um, if I'm designing a switching center, I want to know how many phone calls are going to arrive in a particular amount of time and how is my system going to react to them. Of course, um, potentially more relevant now to uh, engineers of today, packets. Um, at a switching center, so packets at a router, our uh, server, and uh, you know another example is just in general for uh, systems engineers designing, um, you know how many how many uh, checkout lanes do I need to have at a super center? It depends on how many people are arriving for checkout. Okay, so these examples are all continuous time. They're continuous time because we can't, for any real value of time, we can figure out um, how many people have arrived up until that time. So for example, I might have this arrival process where this is continuous time t. I'm going to have a vertical line at any, whenever I have an arrival. So let's say I have an arrival right there. I have an arrival right here. I have one right after it, maybe a little bit of time until the next one, and then three right in a row. Okay? Um, so that would be an example of an arrival process. The Poisson process is just an integral of this process. So we're going to send this into an integral from time zero until uh, time t of this process. If this one was called w of u and these were impulse functions and this would be u, then I'd integrate w of u over u and the output would be my Poisson process x of t. And so let's see what would happen if I had a Poisson process calculated on this random process. So I have x of t, and every time I have an arrival, let's kind of copy these time times of arrival down here, I'm going to increment my total from 0 up until the numbers up until that point. So I've got a um, lots of different arrivals here. Okay, so let's see, at this particular time I'm gonna, well first of all at time zero I don't have anything to integrate so it's gonna be zero. And that zero is gonna continue up until this first arrival when I'm gonna start going up to one. And then at the second arrival it's gonna go up to two. Third arrival, go up to three. Fourth, go up to four. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, so you can see how my Poisson process progresses. And this could go on for a long period of time. Um, time in general doesn't end, so um, we can look and see what happens there. Okay, so this is how I get to my total of seven arrivals at, at the end of this plot. Well, how am I going to figure out what that PDF for the Poisson random process is? At any particular time, I want to know what's the probability density function, or sorry, probability mass function for the number of arrivals. I have to say probability mass function um, because the number of arrivals is a discrete set. It's a set of integers. So x of t is continuous time and discrete valued. Well, the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to start with the binomial random process, which we studied in the previous video segment, and I'm going to show how I can derive the Poisson process from that binomial random process. 
And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw another graph, which is going to approximate what we have here. And this graph is going to look at this last time, let's call that time t, and it's going to divide up my time interval into blocks. And in each block, I'm going to decide whether I had an arrival or not. Here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 blocks. So each block has time duration t divided by 11. In general, t divided by n, <coughs> where here n equals 11. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide whether I had an arrival in that time unit or in, in that block or not. So let's say the first block uh, I have an arrival because let's say this one falls before the end of the block here. Second block, the, the third block, I didn't have any arrivals. In the fourth block, I had two arrivals, but because I'm defining this as a Bernoulli uh, set of Bernoulli trials, I can only have one or zero. Well, the the next two blocks I don't have any. This one I have an arrival. Uh, the next, uh, next one, let's say this first arrival falls into this block, so I have one, but the second, the next two arrive into the second block, and so again I only have uh, ability to mark that as one. And the last one I don't. Okay, so here, when I put these Bernoulli, these Bernoulli trials into a summer to get our binomial counting process, I would count a total of five arrivals. And that's not equal to the correct number, which was seven arrivals at the, uh, at the end of time here, capital T. So what went wrong? Well, my blocks weren't small enough. My blocks were just big enough so that I could have multiple arrivals within the same block. And because I can only count up to one in a Bernoulli trial, um, that's what's screwed me up. So what I'm going to talk about now is what happens when we let n go to infinity. Well, in terms of the Bernoulli, here's what's going to happen. The Bernoulli, uh, I'm sorry, not the Bernoulli, the binomial, has a particular probability of success. This probability equals the probability of success in any given block. Well, as I let n go to infinity, this p is going to go to zero because I've got an infinitely small amount of time. But what I'm going to say is that um, p is equal to lambda times t over n. So it's equal to some rate of arrival. So lambda is the rate of arrivals. And it has units of arrivals per second, or any time unit. Yeah, so if I have 10 arrivals per second and my um, bin width is, you know, 0 0.01, I would approximately have 0.1 probability of having a success in that bin. Okay? What's going to happen as n goes to infinity, we're going to show that we're going to end up with this Poisson PMF. That the probability of at time that x of t is equal to k is equal to lambda t to the k times e to the minus lambda t, so the exponential, over k factorial. And this is what we're going to show that is true for any k equals 0, 1, and so on. Any positive or non-negative integer. Okay? And this is what we're going to show in the next lecture.